Hi everyone, it's Kim. Nice to see you again. Uh, sorry for the time it has taken me to record with everybody staying at home. It's tough to get some uh, quiet time to film some videos. So, uh, sorry for the delay, but I have a few things to show you. That being said, um, everything from finishes to whips to um, haul. So let's get started. Um, so for finishes, uh, just recently I posted this on Instagram. This is, I wonder if I have something I can put behind it. Um, so this is Winter, Winter Rose Manor from Brenda Gervais. And let me just hold it back real quick. Uh, so this has not been released yet. I was able to get this at uh, the Midwest Cross Stitches Retreat where Brenda was teaching and she um, had this uh, for us to purchase. And this I did on XJU Designs 40 Count Beige Gray Fabric. And it was really it was really hard to find a good fabric color for this piece because you would lose some color that's in it. So if I went with just a, maybe a traditional sampler color, uh, this toasted marshmallow, I believe is what the color is, would blend in, or you could lose some of the, a little bit of the lighter browns. And so it was really hard to pick a color. And so I was thinking, well, I'll go with, I don't know, some of the days in Minnesota, you know, are a little bit gray during the winter months, and so I went with this one. Um, I, I'm not sure I'm all that happy with the color fabric choice, but it's done. I'm not starting over, I'm not doing it again, so this is kind of it. Uh, interestingly enough, this bird right here, so the wing and the body are actually two different colors. And I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell that they were two different colors. So I actually looked closely at Michelle Rudy's Farm Girls uh, piece. She has also finished this. And she put a backstitch line there. And I thought that actually would work out great. So I put a backstitch line there as well. I used all the called for colors. Um, what I also did was these backstitch lines for the house so the pattern called for the backstitch line to be the same color as the house. And I couldn't get mine to show up. Um, it was very challenging. So I, I wasn't happy with it. So I took a, a, a brown uh, thread and then backstitched that line. And then I also took it and backstitched this line and backstitched that line on each of the sides of the house just to accentuate it a little bit. Um, and this is what it turned out to be. So thank you, Joyce, for the suggestions. I appreciate that. But that was that. And this took about two months to finish. For whatever reason, I um, I, I couldn't put it down. Uh, there's a gentleman actually across the lake from where I live and he's building a house. And every time I go for a walk and pass by his house, I'd be like, I feel your struggle, my friend. This house is taking forever. So putting, oh, stitching a house. I mean, this is solid coverage right here and you got solid stitching almost in this basket. You got solid stitching down here. I mean, this piece, there's quite a bit of stitching in here. Um, more than I guess I anticipated, but it was, every stitch was fun. So I thoroughly enjoyed stitching this one. Um, and then right here, here, these are all eyelets. So, uh, so yeah, so that's done. And then another finish I was actually looking for for my last video and I couldn't find it. So this is called, I think the pattern is called My Love of Stitching from Hands On Designs. And I had Diddly Daddle Designs assemble the bag. Um, I love her little 
the little fobs that she puts, the zipper pull that she puts together. And um, so uh, the fabric I got from a guild member and she was so kind enough to give me her leftover fabric from her bag. I saw her with this at the guild, the Minnesota Needlework Guild's last retreat. And she was kind enough to give me her leftovers, which was enough to make another bag. Um, and so this is that. Isn't that fantastic? I just loved how that turned out. And I bought the jumbo Rick Rack, I think from Joanne Fabrics. They carry that there. I asked her for a red zipper and voila. So it turned out really, really, really nice. And the interior fabric. So I'm really happy with that. So this was my bus project before uh, we went into quarantine. This was um, what I stitched on the bus, 32 count, I believe. So yeah, so that's that. Um, and then the, the, the last thing that I, I've, um, so 10 years ago, I started bead embroidery. Um, I, I wouldn't say started, I learned how to do it. And I went to a retreat and there was someone there by the name of Sherry Serafini. She is a bead embroidery designer and um, she puts kits together. And I just got a bug in my bonnet to uh, try bead embroidery again. I, I, I don't know why. And so I went to her Etsy shop and I'll put her name below so you can see. But I went to her Etsy shop and I got a few kits and um, I just decided to put one together. So this is actually called Corky um, because this banding right here is actually made out of cork material. Um, so at any rate, there is a um, like a brass bracelet form in here. Um, but anyway, I, uh, I embroidered all these beads on it. So I think it turned out really, really nicely. Um, so yeah, just something I tinkered around with and there you go. So these kits are still available on her Etsy site if you're interested. So again, I will, I will link that below and this wasn't hard. Um, I probably got this done in about five days for a couple hours a day. So it, bead embroidery goes very quickly, uh, <laughs> like cross stitching. So there's that. And I'll probably have other kits to show you or other finishes from kits to show you as I work on those as well. All right. So from a whips perspective, I decided to pick up another kit that um, was part of what Brenda Gervais offered through the Midwest retreat and that was the little house the little red house sampler so there's that I don't know I just got into this Brenda kick so um, and she did hers on 36 count weeks linen and I went through my stash and I actually pulled out a Jersey cream 45 count and I started stitching on it. And to me with the Weeks Dye Works threads, the stitches look too chunky on 45 count. Uh, and obviously with the shops, the LNSs closed, I mean, they do have curbside, but of course I don't have patience for that. <laughs> like, you know, I want to start it in that minute, not, hey, I'd like to place an order. I'll come by, pick it up, all the things. Um, I need to start it right now. So I decided to go with 40 count Weeks Linen. And this is not Zweigart based. This is the old Weeks. And it's really, see, it's, you can see through it pretty well. Um, there's not a lot of stiffness to it. So to be honest, it's one, not one of my favorites, but at the same time, it's in my stash. Um, what else am I gonna, I don't know if I'll pick anything else up to use it for, so 
<laughs> so I'm just gonna suffer through and use this linen. Um, and this is how far I got. So this is the, um, so this is this part right down here is where I've started. So it's actually stitching up pretty quick. Um, it's not like the, the, the winter manner that I was working on because like I said, it's solid stitching. This one is not so much, but there is gonna be some over one. And so uh, Stitchville, my LNS is gonna be open or actually started opening today. Um, so I hope to go there and get some 100 slash three silk thread to do the over one, especially on the weeks. I think I'm gonna need it. Um, it it'll be too hard with uh, the Weeks Dye Works threads, I think. So anyway, that's my progress on that. Um, and then the rest I had to show you was haul. And, Believe me, by no means is this everything that I got. Um, I did get my Nashville stuff, but I don't know. I feel like that time has passed. I mean, Nashville was now a couple months ago. I just got my order from the LNS I ordered from. It took a little while to get it all with everything that's happening. So, um, and obviously I didn't mind. I had enough to stitch on, so uh, no problems there. But I wanted to show a couple other trinkets before I get to the patterns. So, and I will also put her name down below, but this is from Deborah Hartwick. And it's a little, it's a little elephant um, pin cushion. And you know, every time you step, and I shouldn't have this needle in his head like that, this poor, poor elephant, not that his arm is any better. Um, but every time you stab your, stab your elephant, stab the needle in the elephant, it's supposed to sharpen the needle. Um, but isn't he cute? So she had a few of these. I mean, each one is created a little bit differently, but uh, she even has the details of the beads on the down the front of his shirt. I just thought he was so cute. I had to get him. So I got that. And then she also had these little tomatoes. It's very small. And I mean, this is a densely packed tomato boy like there's no squish in this thing um, but just super cute so I had to get one of those um, and then the rest of what I have like I said is stashed so let me kind of go through a couple of these so um, one is Sakura from Autumn Lane and when I saw Kenny stitching the model for this, I mean, I couldn't wait till he was done so I could, and they printed these and made these. Uh, what I'm thinking about doing is doing a dark blue fabric for the background. I mean, I understand that this is her umbrella. It kind of looks like a moon though, but I'm gonna be using dark blue fabric for that. And then I ended up getting all the, I had a lot of the floss, uh, but this also, yeah. This also uses some of the new DMC as well, so I put in an order for some of those and got those. And then, like so many, I got this. I got the new Mirabilia. Um, and then, oh, look at how many, I'm, I'm shocked. Uh, when you see this, I'm not sure it equates to all of this. Um, but there it all is. And I didn't do a final count of like how many ended up being in here, but it practically uses all of the new DMC colors. So that's kind of cool. Uh, all right, from Country Sampler, I got Stacy Nash's uh, red, red work stitching pocket in Chatelaine. And it comes with all the stuff, so. I thought that was cool. So everything to assemble, it's all in there. I thought that was great. And then a few other things. I also did watch the Attic's, uh, Attic Needleworks newest video. And oh my gosh, the Francis Eden sampler is back in print. So I think the Francis Eden is one of those samplers that goes in print, then out of print for a while 
and back in print. So I've wanted it, and of course I wanted it when I was out at print, and I'd been looking for it for a long time. And then I'm watching the video over the weekend and nearly fell over when they said it was back in print. So you better believe I put in my order to get that new sampler. So I can't wait till it gets here. Um, but a couple other things that I got. So from Long Dog Samplers, I got Leo Rising. I don't know, there's something about those lions that I just can't, I just love those lions. And I think I also got the one that's from Heartstring Samplery that uses some of the same lions. So I don't know, I just really like those. And I will probably also be doing it in navy blue on a maybe antique white 40 count or something like that. And I think I have silks from Silks For You that is a good blue color, so I think I'll use that. But I, I really like this design. And it should go quick. Should, being the keyword. Uh, from Kitten Stitcher, so Teresa, I got Eagle from Sheepish Designs. And I think this is actually out of print, and I'm trying to remember who stitched this, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have that. And Kitten Stitcher still had it in stock on her website. So I got that. Then, um, so I know all this aside, I uh, actually plan to cut back on <laughs> the spending because during this whole quarantine period, I have just been uh, shopping for comfort and it really needs to stop. And of course, as soon as I said that, all my charts that I've kind of been keeping my eye out for for a while started coming up on eBay. So I kind of broke my own rule and uh, picked those up. But, you know, I haven't, to be honest, I haven't really been buying as much lately. So the one is Historic Stitches, John Foster, 1885 sampler. I love that house, look at that. So I had this search for a long time. I, I can't remember where I first saw it, but just love that. And again, John Forrester, 1885 sampler from Historic Stitches. All right, another one I've been looking for is Ann Simpson, 1837 from the Sampler Works. So I saw, there's one on eBay out there right now for like $80, and obviously I wasn't gonna pay that. But look at that, isn't that super cool? I just love that. So yeah, the Adam and Eve, it looks like they have pink skin, so I might have to make it a little bit more non-pink. Um, and then a few more things from the attic. I apologize these aren't in any kind of order. So M.A. Badger 1870 from the Traveling Stitcher. So again, if you go to the Attic Needleworks uh, YouTube videos, they've been just showing off what's on their wall. And I just love that one. And Let's be clear, I have been to the attic many, many times. I've been very lucky in that respect. I go there, or I used to go there for work quite a bit, and so I would always stop in. And so when they were showing these on the wall, I was kind of like, where have I been? Why didn't I get that when I was there? I don't know. So here it is. I also got Fiesta. I just love how far apart some of those uh, motifs are. And it just, I mean, even the name of it makes you happy. So in this time you had to get something happy. But this is 400 stitches by 400 stitches. But again, it's all motifs. They're pretty spread out, very colorful. So, yeah. Another one, uh, Luis Gonzalez, 1851 from Samplers Remembered. An oldie but goodie. I don't know if I've ever seen this stitched, but for whatever reason, again, its beauty was lost on me, which is why I never bought it when I was there, but I corrected that error. And there it is. And I also picked up Amina House. Um, I just like the blues. This is also by Samplers Remembered. I liked the blues. So 
So anyway, that's what I have for you today. I'm sorry it took me so long to kind of get going again. Um, you know, at, at some point I might show the other stash that or haul that I got depending. It's, it's a lot. So I didn't want to put it all in this haul. So these are the ones that I primarily wanted to show you all. But um, thank you all for uh, the support as well as for all of you putting FOSS2 videos together. Um, it's how I spend my evenings and it's a great escape uh, just to see what everybody's working on. And of course it makes you want to stitch all the things. So um, thank you and I hope you all stay safe. Bye.